Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Xenatrix Zadare, the man of a thousand runes, the CEO of Zadare Enterprises, Chaos Incarnate. I won't use some of my other titles. I'm not with my erstwhile and possibly best friend, Mildred the Monk, today. But I am in a genuine and interesting state of contemplation. This is not one of my normal videos. This is not scripted. There are some bullet points. But altogether, this is not actually anything that is something I went to the efforts of fully outlining. This is inspired by a video that came across my particular feed at one point by a YouTube creator by the name of Razi. Specifically, the name of the video is Online Friendships, a Eulogy. And there will be a link in the description to that video should you see the inspiration for this particular tirade. I have some bullet points from the video that I feel like need to be covered, and I'll be expanding upon my own personal views as well. But the short and long of the video is that while there is a lesson to be learned in it, it was almost a practice of self-closure for Razi to try and give himself the feelings necessary to move beyond the sense of loss of the many online friends who have simply evaporated. Now, as a preface, I am from a much older guard of the internet. I remember bulletin boards and web rings. I remember the early days of Java-based chat programs. I remember IRC and ICQ and all the other fun little three-letter messaging system names. MSN, AOL, etc. And I remember having friends lists on all of these programs, uh, except for maybe IRC, that were dozens of people long, all lost to time. And that's part of what really struck me as necessary for this particular video essay soliloquy. I don't know. There are words for it. But Rosy begins by saying that friends and, fr and the friendships of them generally exist in the places or in the processes where they were forged. He uses examples like the friends you make at school and the friends you make at work, and how once you've moved away from these places, barring few exceptions, these friendships stop existing. Which is a very distinct and mostly correct observation about people that they move on when they physically move. It's a slightly depressing thought to have. But he expands to, well, what about friendships you make online? Because to be fair, online friends can weather that physical movement. You're not moving away from them because everything can be found right back online when you log in. But then that brings the very first point. What happens when last seen one day ago becomes last seen 10 years ago? What happens when that person you were talking to that you said you'd see the next day, you stop seeing altogether? And this isn't, this isn't a, a, a what if that is hard to imagine. I know that there are probably friends I've had throughout the years online where my last scene is 
eight years ago, ten years ago. I know for sure it's on Final Fantasy XIV. I quit in 2016, so that's eight years ago. There are friends on there who probably are like, oh, he might come back someday. I probably never will. Not with all the changes. But Rosie moves on to talk about how because of these sudden disappearances, places within the games they enjoyed or events that they participated in inside these games carry ghosts of the past or ghosts in the machine as I like to call them. And because of that, Rosie talks about two types of nostalgia. There's one type of nostalgia that he brings up that's like, oh yeah, you're playing a game or doing something cool and it gives you the same warm fuzzy feeling it did when you were younger. The type of nostalgia people get when they play their old retro games or read their old books and the same sense of wonder uh, pops up. But then there's the other type of nostalgia that he brings up that it feels like something's off, like things ended too abruptly, like there's a sudden cliffhanger where there shouldn't be. And all of a sudden, all the memories around these landscapes become almost shackles. Things that you don't want to think about or encounter because they don't bring you any enjoyment anymore. They don't bring you any happiness. It's nothing but heartache. And so these memories really aren't nostalgic. He says that they're, it's a nostalgia that's like a dead end, and that instead of nostalgia, maybe it should be called grief. And I think that's appropriate. It's mourning a loss, a loss that you don't have any explanation for. And it evokes this intense, bittersweet compulsion for the past to be in the present so that those people are still around and that absolutely sounds like part of the stages of grief but the real issue here is the specific types of friendships and how they end he points out that there are some people that he distanced himself from intentionally for whatever reason. And there are some people where they just kind of petered out because they grew apart. That happens. People grow apart. It's the truncated friendships, the ones that are suddenly cut off with no explanation that are the real issue. And then he talks about how these memories, these ghosts, aren't what occurs when someone is gone, when they aren't around anymore, but that ghosts are the result of feeling like the person is still there, or should still be there. Of course, over a long life online, there will always be a slow decay for friendships. People will disappear one by one. And that's just a reality to face. Sometimes you can reach out to the people that you lost. And you'll connect. And it'll be like nothing's changed. And in some cases, you'll never hear from them again. Even after you've reached out. I personally have experienced this. One of my oldest friend lists back on Hotmail, back when Hotmail was still a thing, instead of it just being part of the Outlook suite now, I had tons of friends from the days when I would 
talk in web rings and also the days when I would talk on Java-based chat programs. Literally hundreds of people I met, made friends with, played games with. All of them gone. And at one point, I sent an email to my entire address book going, hey, this is me. I'm probably going to be shutting down my Hotmail or at least moving it into an inactive state because I still have to use the actual Hotmail account as my Microsoft online account. If you need to talk to me, here's my new email. I got one person out of something like 328 or 329 email addresses. One person responded. And they said, hey, yeah, I kind of remember you. Glad to hear you're doing okay. Um, don't really have much to talk about. And that's the last I heard from them, too. That was six years ago. So it is true that you can reconnect. But it's also true that you probably won't with many of them. Rossi moves on to say that when you're given a conclusive reason of some sort for a friendship that ended online, that can bring closure. It can make you feel better about the situation in the fact that you don't feel like there's, an, there's a lack, that there is an ending and you know why. But for the people who disappear abruptly that you never hear from again, that abrupt silence leaves an aching maw, a pit, this hole of why. Why is one of the most damning words, and uh, I don't think many people realize that. Additionally, un these unfinished friendships can lead to constant doubt. Again, the word why is insidious. And so Razi concludes by saying, it's better to just accept I'll never hear from these people again and move on. And that way, the closure is complete. Razi also points out that he's someone that likes to hold on to things even when he probably shouldn't. And I resonated with a few comments from his full video, especially that one. It even played out sort of like an internal chamber play in my head. Me talking to me, talking to me, talking about the various things that have happened in my life. And it went a, a little something like this. Why am I being accused of being stuck to the past? And then another version of myself goes, well, you're arguing with a video that says you should Bring yourself closure and move on. Why struggle to hold all these memories? Why struggle to hold all these people? Even with the epiphanies you've had in your life to not live in the past, that the past can help shape you, but does not define you. And my response was very simple. Who will carry their memory if not me? Sure, I only know a facet of whatever a person shows me. You can never truly know the fullness of another person except for yourself, and sometimes not even yourself. But what they showed me, the facets that I was given the greatest privilege to see, they need to be preserved. And as cliche as it might seem, I was reminded of the scenes from Free Run Beyond Journey's End, where she talks about carrying the memories of her friends into the future, even when they're long gone. That there's somebody there to carry who they were into the now. And I started to realize that that's how I see myself. I don't like when friendships end. I never have. I thought the idea of outgrowing people was insane. Outgrowing behaviors, sure. 
If the behaviors of a person dictate that you must stop associating with them, understandable. But just two people who grow apart, I, I can't comprehend it. I, there are people I know from 20 years ago that it, were they to reach out to me today, they might be vastly different people. I will act like nothing's changed. I know this because it's happened to me. I know this because there are people I've reconnected with over the years after extremely long periods of no contact as if nothing has changed because I carry their memory from the past into the present. So the idea about growing friendships, losing friendship in any fashion, it, it strikes me as nonsense which may be the case for someone like me. I value bonds. I value the people that I've chosen to give that piece of myself to and that they've given a piece of themselves to me. That's an act of choice. You don't do that with everyone in the world. You do that with the people that you feel deserve it by whatever criteria you choose. And that act is a permanently changing one. It's like, it's like particle physics. Two particles meet, ricochet off each other, permanently and forever changing each other for the rest of time. Every bond you make, every connection you choose is an indelible yet ephemeral change to who you are. And I am the sum of all the changes I've made, of all the changes made upon me, of all the choices I did or did not take as a person. I am a sum of these things. So how can I accept that there has to be an end? That there has to be a pace at which eventually someone stops? It's unacceptable to me. And maybe I'm the insane one. I am chaos incarnate. I do call myself insane on a daily basis. And most commonly of all, I don't connect with a majority of common quote unquote wisdoms, common platitudes, common ideals. My ideals were forged in a crucible of science fiction and fantasy novels, in music, in video games. My convictions, my ethics, my morals, my ideals are romantic, hopelessly so. I have been described as a hopeless romantic by my own mother, which admittedly I probably also inherited from her. And so this idea that friendship can die? It brings within me one of the deepest existential pains I can feel. Because if you really had that bond, if you really made that choice, if you really gave that piece of yourself to another person, how can you stand to watch it die? How can you sit there and not feel that pound of flesh cut from you? It is a pain that I'm not sure anyone else can share. 
I'm not sure that there's an empathy strong enough for something like this. I'm not sure that there's a sympathy wide enough to accept this. And so I reject the idea that friendship can die. I reject the idea that we run our course and move along. There's no such thing. Ignore the pain all you like, but there's no such thing. You've given a piece of yourself to another person. They've given a piece of themselves to you. And you will remain indelibly connected. And it's at this point that I have to say the most surprising thing to everybody else, I'm sure. Despite all that, I don't fear death. I never have. Existential dread doesn't come to me. I don't feel a piece of fear about what happens when I'm gone. Do I just become nothingness or is there an afterlife? It doesn't matter to me. I make my meaning here and now, and that's all that I can do. And that's exactly why the idea of the end of friendship, the death of friendship, is anathema to me. Because I make all the important things happen here and now, and I will carry all of the memories of all of those with me to the future. Because no one else will. And with that, we come to the end of my little rant, my emotional tirade. And so once again, people, this is Xanatrix Adare signing off. And remember, you don't only seek the truth, the truth seeks you.